Hey Wolfpack, Angela Wolf here, and we are behind the scenes, for real, behind the scenes. I hope you got my note that uh, we were going live today at 2 instead of 1.30, so I hope you weren't hanging around for half an hour, but if you were, maybe you had some good lunch and tea. So welcome everyone, great to see you, say hi. If you've never been here before, say where you're from. If you're from another country besides the USA, put your country uh, emoji on there because it's always wonderful to see you all. So how are you? Happy St. Patrick's Day. I have my green on. Actually, <laughs> I wore a green. I wore a green jacket today. I wore a green shirt. We'll just end it there, but I nobody's going to pinch me today. I've got green all over the place. <laughs> so great to see you all. So uh, today, guess what we're doing? The Rachel Twin Set Sew Along Part 2. And I have everything laid on the table, ready to cut but I'll, I'll use your help for that. So if you missed last week, we talked about altering the pattern a little bit, things like that, uh, doing some fitting. So if you missed that, you can go back and watch that on my YouTube or Facebook channel. So by the way, are any of you doing anything special for St. Patrick's Day today? Any fabulous dinners or, well, cooking, baking, at least our restaurants are open, so there is an option. I'm not a big cabbage girl, so, I know that that's like a lot of the specials. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the color, the texture, something. I like corned beef hash. I just don't like, uh, just not a cabbage girl. <laughs> that's okay. I don't like chocolate either. So if you think I'm weird, now you know I'm really weird. All right. So let's not even delay very much uh, since we're already running behind today. I'm going to take you over to the fabric. We're going to cut and be sure to ask your questions because, um, at the end, I'll come back and answer those. So I can't see them necessarily while I'm over there, but I can watch them at the end. All right, so you ready? I think you all have rolled in. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Great to see you. Okay. Oh, what am I wearing? I'm wearing the Delilah, by the way. This is the Delilah top, which we've been pattern hacking in Fashion Sewing Club. If I would have had an extra half an hour today, I would have added some lace down the outside just for, you know, just the fun of it. But uh, this is actually the Delilah. I, it's a rayon knit. And I embroidered like, quilting designs all over it. So it, it makes it look wrinkly on purpose, like an on purpose wrinkle. I like that because then I don't have to press it. All right, so let's go over to the table and let's talk about some of these fabrics. All right, so first of all, I grabbed this knit. This is a rayon knit. It's very similar to my green. This is that new color I showed you that I got in. I love this. I have one more bolt of it, but that I won't be getting more. That's, that's it. I always buy extra of what I'm going to be sewing with. That way I have some for you. But this color is going to be awesome for spring. So when I'm on the fishing boat, I always like to have a nice warm not warm, but you know, kind of gets chilly in the evenings. So I just want something, a light sweater. So the Rachel twin set is perfect for that. So I have this and I'm going to use this for the jacket and the tank. And then later I'm going to make a color blocked tank to go with it. So every time I have a little jacket from the Rachel, I like to have a few different tank tops to wear underneath of them because you know, you're not wearing, I don't want to look too matchy matchy if you know what I mean, but every once in a while I do want to match. So I'm going to do the tank and jacket out of this, and then I'll probably do another tank out of, there's a yellow back there, and probably one more out of white, because this all kind of goes into that color family. The other color that goes with this, now I picked up some yellow, because that's the color of the year, but I also picked up some gray, a light gray, a real pretty rich, almost like a platinum gray. And that would be a really good tank under here as well. I can't wear platinum gray by itself. It washes me out. But underneath this, it'd be fantastic. So the first thing you need to do is wash and dry your fabric. So if you haven't done that, do that after today's show. I'm just going to give you some tips for cutting out. And I'm going to sew together the shoulders and get that started. But you need to wash and dry your fabric. And you want to know why? Because especially if it's a rayon or a cotton, it will shrink in length. So if you thought your sweater was going to be this long and you cut it, sew it together, it's going to be this long. It usually doesn't shrink sideways. It's usually length. But either way, you don't want that to happen. So wash it, dry it. I always wash and dry my fabrics, even if it's a polyester that doesn't shrink. You never know if the dye is going to come out of the fabric and things like that. So 
All right, so here, you're not gonna be able to see this from the other camera, but I have the whole end of the bolt right here. I'm gonna make sure that it's on top of the table when we go to cut, because you never want your fabric to be hanging off your table, because it can actually skew it. So you might think, again, you're cutting this long or this wide, and then the fabric after you cut it comes in because you were stretching it. So don't ever let your fabric hang off the side of the table, okay? So let's go cut. <laughs> Helen, wash dried and ready to sew. That's awesome. Okay, so for those of you that are haven't been here, this is the jacket we're making. It's the Rachel twin set. Here is a picture of just the jacket without the tank. All right, back to the cutting table. All right, so here I have a few of my pieces. I can't fit everything up here at the same time. But at, if you remember last week, I added two inches to this because I wanted this to be just a little bit longer on my body. And on the back piece, I was considering cutting this all together as one. I could also cut the front piece all together as one if I want to. So we were talking about that before, how to pattern hack just a little bit. Well, currently this pattern has a front and a back, a side seam, and then a panel for the front and a back piece right here. Now you can't really cut the front and back together without losing some of the style lines. So I have a few options when I'm trying to combine pieces a little bit for less seaming. So if I don't want to seam on the center back, then I would combine these two right here. And remember, there's seam allowances on each of these, a half of an inch. So I would go up a half of an inch and half of an inch here. The only thing is, if you notice, this has a nice curve to it, which for the back piece here, this is straight across. So if I decide to lift this up and match it, I'm gonna lose some of that. So just keep that in mind, all right? You wanna make sure that you're gonna have a, enough of this seam here that will match to the front seam. So if you go up too high on here, you either need to, what I would recommend is go up half of an inch on this piece, mark a half of an inch on this piece, and mark it right there, like that. And then true your line. If, if for any reason your front piece, when you measure your front to the back, is not matching up, you might have to add a little bit extra to the bottom. But what really is important if you put these two pieces together is that your center back, this is the fold, that that's all on the straight. All right, now what about the front piece? So the front piece, and this is the front, I just have it flipped over because so you can see. Here's the side seam and here's the side seam. These are currently two different pieces, but again, if I want this to be all one piece, similar to the back, I can take this to here, and a half of an inch, half of an inch, and piece this together. If I tape this together, I can cut all of this as one piece instead of having a seam. All right, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna grab my tape here, Got my handy dandy packing tape. Half of an inch, half of an inch. And I want to make sure that this is even right here. So there's the front. Now I'm going to cut this entire one piece here all as one. All right, that's a grain line, not the center fold. So here's my side back, my side front. So now I will, when I go to do the collar, which you'll see, you would already have this corner here to have to sew into. So that's not gonna be any different. It should, the only thing that's different is I'm not going to have a seam right here. All right, and now for the back piece, let's do the same thing. All right, now let's just check if both of these are pretty even. Yeah, 
that's pretty good. So I'll just have to make sure I true that line. You don't want to have a perfect like X or anything like that. You don't want something, see how that comes in and then out. Make sure that's a nice curve. So I'm just going to cut this just a wee bit. There you go. All right. So this is going to be cut on the fold. Sometimes with knits, I won't cut on the fold. I'll actually just have one full piece, but this knit will be fine. And then for this piece here, we're going to cut two, but it does not need to be on the fold. Make sense? All right. The other pieces that I have here, just FYI, these are pieces that we played with last week at the tank top. I'm going to cut those without, you don't need to be on there while I'm cutting the tank, but I'm going to tape this back together, cut out my tank top as well. The other pieces you'll need are the collar and the sleeve. Okay, so just, let me, I guess I don't need packaging tape while I'm trying to cut this, right? So I have my fabric here, and I have the right side facing out at this point. Now, if your knit, for any reason, curls, it'll usually curl to the right side of the fabric, usually, but not always, because sometimes it'll, I mean, I say usually because the one time that it doesn't, it'll go the other way. If you're having a problem with your fabric pulling, I will trim off my seam, my salvage edge, and it will release your fabric. So for some reason, you lay your fabric down, and you're looking at that knit, and it's really tight at the salvage, and then it kind of comes out. You need to cut off that salvage edge. So for now, I'm just going to see if I can get all of this on the camera for you so you can see the entire piece as one. And I'm folding from salvage to salvage, making sure that my fabric's not laying on the ground. And this fabric isn't too bad. Quite often, a lot of these rayon knits, especially the polyester knits, it'll pull really tight at this salvage edge. And then you'll see the fabric kind of come out. And what happens is when you trim off that salvage edge, it releases all the fabric instead of it being tight on the edges, if that makes any sense at all. If you're really new to sewing knits, I've got a couple online classes if you go to AngelaWolf.com. There's an essential guide to sewing knits, and that will cover sewing and serging knits if you're a total newbie. Okay, so let's see if I have enough fabric to get both of these pieces in one. So here's the front, and here's the back. I would say definitely no. What I do have room for though, is to get the back piece done. And then I can slide this up a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing, how many, let's see, how many more pieces do I have? I can do my tank. Okay, I guess I'm gonna be forced to do something different. I don't wanna waste all this fabric over here. So instead of having it folded all the way in half, I'm going to fold it. Trust me, I am not a big fabric waster. All right, so instead, let me shake this out a little bit. If I can squeeze a neckline or anything else like that out of any of these little other areas, or maybe I can get a, a front tank out of that section there. I want to make sure I don't just leave a wide piece open that I can't use on the fold or, you know, the front and back, I should say. Let's see if this is better. Oh, much better. Now, depending on your knit fabric, I don't know how far your salvage comes over. On knits, quite often you'll see almost a whole different texture in the salvage. So make sure that you're not cutting a part of your pattern in that salvage where it's gonna look funny on your, on your top, okay? All right, so assuming I taped all this together pretty straight, I did not. So there's like a little bit airy here, but that doesn't matter. It'll be fine, because it's gonna fit just fine. I probably should have taped this a little bit more Let's see. Huh, it's good enough. We're going to leave it for now. All 
right? Weights. Okay, I've got my rotary cutter. I don't know if this is a new one or not, but I guess we'll find out, right? I'm just cutting just outside of my pattern. I think for this one, I'm cutting the medium which is a little bit big for me, but I also want this to be a sweater that I can wear over other tops while I'm, you know, in the evenings and stuff. So I'm, I went up a size. I can always take it in a little bit if I want to, but I really wanted this to be a loose sweater. All right, so let's get rid of this piece. This is top, so our back is cut. For my notches, I just give myself little snips. And a snip here. And now, because I cut this this way, my back piece will not have a seam right here, which the Rachel pattern usually does. Now it's just going to drape and be a little flowy. One more thing I like to do is just mark the wrong side. Okay, well, I have no idea where all my Taylor's chalk went. This is what I get for cleaning on the weekend. I'm just going to put a small pin in the seam allowance to tell me that that's the wrong side. It's amazing when you start sewing all these pieces together. They look so much alike and you don't want to accidentally sew the right side to the right side or something like that. All right, so there's the back of the jacket. And now we need to make room for the front of the jacket. So this would be enough room definitely for a sleeve maybe even um, the collar, but I'm gonna slide up past that fabric because I know that this next front piece is pretty wide. <laughs> My camera's probably trying to uh, focus and all it sees is a bunch of coral, right? All right, so for now, I'm leaving. The, I'm letting the fabric drop on the floor right now, just so I can lay this out, and then I'll lift up that piece. Because again, you don't want fabric hanging off of your cutting board. Slippery little stuff, right? See, we should just do sew alongs every single week. And then maybe by the time summer starts, I'll have my wardrobe finished that I wanted to have last summer that when COVID hit, I was too busy to do. Or actually, we never went anywhere to wear it. Hoping that that changes this year. All right, now I'm gonna get that fabric off the floor. My salvages are all lined up. All right, that looks pretty good. Slide this up just a little bit. Okay. 
Now, to be honest, if I wasn't on live, I would have this on my huge cutting table behind me and the whole thing would be cut out already. But I'm just trying to make sure it looks nice for you. So here's my front piece, which does not need to be cut out on any fold. So I'm actually gonna cut it out closer to the salvage over here because then that gives me all of this fabric here on the fold that I can use. I could also fold this back a little bit and only utilize some of the fabric. Let's see, which one would give me more room? Probably, I don't think it really matters. I'll just go here, because I could always cut the collar down this edge here. All right, so here is my grain line. If you have a hard time finding that on your knit, if I fold this in half, it should be parallel to the salvage. So I have my Coulter's ruler here, just to give you a little visual. Let's see, about nine, nine. That looks pretty darn good. Wait, and grab one more, wait. found these pattern weights. Um, Joe has these in his store. So when we were shopping and going to expos and stuff, they would have these in their booth. So I don't know if any of you are going to the Atlanta show or it's over. I don't know. It's sometime around now. Um, just ask Alfredo. He'll know exactly which weights we're talking about. I thought the gold and silver ones were cute, but they also had these. And then I love this. Barbara. Okay, now I, I got my uh, rotary cutters mixed up. One of these is for paper and one is for fabric. So if I go to cut now and it doesn't cut, I will know that it, it was the wrong one. So again, I'm changing my pattern a little bit, cutting both of these pieces in one. Did it cut? Oh, it cut. Okay, let's see this here. And don't forget, because of my pattern changes that I made, that I'm going to have to add some length to my collar, remember? So that's going to be a little point right there. That's always a fun trick, trying to get that sewn into. But it's pretty easy. I have some tricks for you. Always keep your fingers away from the rotary cutter. And also, please do not hold your rotary cutter way down here or your fingers way down here. I keep mine way out of the way. Technically, I could hold it here or here, but I don't even want to risk running over one of my fingers. All right, so there's that. And let's go ahead and mark our notches. There's no notches. This is the center front. Looks like there's a few notches over here. And there should be one more right around there. See it right here? Okay, one more thing that I do, since we are not sewing this together and we're acting like it's one piece, in order to be able to attach the collar, because the collar is going to go all the way around, and then this piece will lay down when you sew that on, I'm just going to give this, give it a little itsy bitsy snip, like itsy bitsy. I know that's not a number, but just think of like an eighth of an inch. All right, so then when I go to sew this, this will easily open up, and when I go to serge to add that collar, you literally hold this piece down and serge down the whole piece. All right? You don't have to do that snip. It just helps me know where that edge is, number one, and also it just helps the fabric to spread open. All right, so let me grab my 
Let's see where other table. Hold on one sec. Okay, so I know you're hearing all these noises and you're like, what's going on? <laughs> okay, so this is what we have so far. We have our front piece. See how this, this is that front piece. This always gets people confused too. So here's the front piece like this. And then once you add the collar, this hangs down. That's how we get that beautiful drape. I love that part. All right, and then what do we have for the back so far? <laughs> and now we have the back. And the back still has some flair to it down here because once this is fitted on the sides, I'm just gonna pull it up, there's still some extra flair in the center back. Not as much as the front, but once it's sewn together, you'll see there's still some fabric that's nice and flowy down at the bottom once this is fitted. And then last week, somebody mentioned, let's add a little piece of elastic in here. So when we're finished, if we decide we want the waist cinched a little bit more, we can always add a little piece of elastic, or you could add a casing with um, a tie. You could add a, a little belt, a fake belt kind of. That'd be kind of cute. So the next thing I'm gonna do is surge the shoulders, but first I'll check and make sure you don't have any questions. All right. Susan, you get your yoga well. Why is the bottom piece reversed? Uh, Colleen, it's because the patterns had to match up. That's why. So it's not reversed. It's just like when you print the pattern out or when you have the pattern, to, to be able to connect that bottom piece and that top piece. I'm pattern hacking. So the original pattern, you wouldn't have to have the pattern pieces reversed. So it's not reversed, it's just flipped over. I could have flipped it the other way too. All right, Cornel Cornelia. I dropped my cheaters today, by the way, right in my parking lot. And now I got like this little crack down there. <laughs> so much for that, right? All right, I guess I just need some contacts so I can see your writing. Altering. I'm a medium, but the sleeve opening is too tight on my muslin. It's 17 inches and I need to make it 19. Could you go over what piece would I make the adjustments with? Over which pieces? Okay, so if your sleeve opening is too tight on your muslin, Cornelia, are you? did you cut it out of a knit, first of all? Because if you just use muslin fabric, that's not going to be the same as a knit. And when you say that your sleeve is too tight. Are you talking about the armhole or are you talking about the sleeve through here, through the bicep? Two totally different things. If you need more room in the entire armhole, you might just wanna go up a size because that will give you more room in the armhole and you'll go to the next size sleeve. If it's just your bicep that you need room, then it's your sleeve. And I don't know which episode, I'd have to go back and look, but if you slash, if this is your sleeve pattern, and you slash up to the tip, down to the bottom, and then to each, you know, your sleeve's kind of like this. I can draw this out too. Slash to each one, you can spread that pattern open and it gives you more room in this area and this area. That's not your arm's eye though. The arm's eye is totally different. So that's why I'm just curious why it was too tight here. Although my knit tops on my jackets, I cut the armholes really high. And there's a reason. Now this I'm wearing the Delilah, so there, there's no armhole here. It's just, it's like one piece. But when you try on a top or a sweater or a jacket and the armholes cut higher, when you go to move around, <laughs> I feel like I'm swimming. People are gonna lock in and go, what is she doing today? <laughs> We're just uh, hanging out. Um, what happens is your whole top doesn't go up. Your, only your arm moves. If your armhole is cut too low, and you put a sleeve on there, it's very uncomfortable. You actually could have a jacket that's three times too big, and if that armhole's too low and you attach a sleeve to it, you're like this. You feel like it's too tight, even though the jacket's huge. The armhole's like so important. So just if you expand on that, maybe I could help. <laughs> Rebecca, my arms aren't that long. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, I love all your tips for pattern weights. Hey Kelly, I, I, I'm not sure 
if Alfredo's back. I think he is, but I'm not sure. I just saw that Joe was going to be at the show, and I can't imagine he'd go without Alfredo. Uh, Mary, oh, it was last weekend. Mary, were you there by any chance? I'm just curious. I'm just curious because I think that's pretty much the first expo that's been live in person. Yes. Hey, Susan. Oh, bye, Jenny. Go back to work. <laughs> I'm, I agree with you, Debbie. All right, I'm just checking to see if there's any questions before I go. So, oh, Shirley, you're so cute. I think I did. I just shipped. I think there's like six more orders. Um, been shipping like crazy. So thank you guys for all the orders, by the way. But um, if you haven't gotten yours yet, it's coming. Oh, thanks, Sparky. All right, just making sure. No questions, guys? Okay, perfect. All right, so now I'm going to go to the serger, and I'm going to just sew together the shoulders. The next thing I'll end up doing, I sew together the shoulders of the jacket, I insert the sleeve, and then I make one long seam down the sides. Okay, does that make sense? But I don't think you need to watch everything there, but I am going to do the shoulders with you because I've already set the serger up. And if you look closely here, I have, let me grab my fabric. Okay. This is how I get my exercise during the live shows, running around. So I have my serger set up for four thread overlock. And if you have are new to using your serger, you can go back. I have serger 101, 102, and then we did the cover stitch last week. It's a series, but you don't have to take every class in it. But I explained why to use a lot of these things. But So what I have set up is a four thread overlock because it's a little bit stronger than, uh, say, a three thread. And not that I'm going to be doing flip-flops in my... <laughs> sweater but I do take it on an awful lot and when we're on the fishing boat you never know so I've got um, two needles with just regular thread and then I have my loopers with the wooly poly and I found this color coral it's not a perfect match but it's pretty close I usually I usually try to air towards the lighter side so this looks pretty good and this looks really good when it comes to doing uh, the rolled hem or the edge, I'll probably try to find one thread a little closer to this so I can use the two loopers for that rolled hem. I think that's gonna be beautiful. I'll probably do a narrow overlock though, not a rolled hem. All right, the other things, I have all the standard settings. Sometimes when you're using Wooly Poly, you'll need to adjust your settings just a little bit if your looper is getting too wild. If you're using a fabric that's really loose, like you've seen my probably seen my blue it's like a blue sweater Rachel I've worn it for years I'm sure you've seen it if I show a photo it'd be like oh yeah <laughs> you wore that back in the 90s yeah I did probably but I love it and it's still here but that's a really loose sweater so I actually had to add elastic clear elastic to the shoulders this fabric I am not gonna need to worry about so here's your quick tip for surging can you see my, yeah, you can see that pretty close. Just look down because I can't like, I only have one camera over here. I always leave a piece of fabric and test it before I start surging my actual project. So here's the back piece. I have it facing up. I have the front. Now the front can get very confusing because you're like, which way is the front? <laughs> so look, this is one of the fronts. Look for this piece here, this triangle, that's a front. So that's gonna go on the second shoulder. So I kind of lay these together, match up my notches. I have notches at the shoulders. These are half inch seam allowances. So you'll be trimming off just a little bit of the fabric. And then my other front piece is, looks like that. So I have right sides together. I don't think I have any pins over here. I have my beautiful 
<laughs> I have a beautiful thread case, which I love. Thanks, Kelly and Sharon. If you guys haven't been to their website, Laser Bee, they're awesome. Okay. I'm just going to slide this up and let's go ahead and surge the shoulders. I'm just surging off that fabric I already have on there. Now, one thing I want, I left the camera there for a reason. Do you see how this thread just keeps wrapping around? You want to make sure that it doesn't get wrapped underneath here. I have had that happen. And what it does is it'll pull your thread and it breaks. And I know how much you all love to re-thread your serger. <laughs> And now I'm running the second shoulder through. And always give yourself chain off and give yourself a lot of chain here because you don't want this to come unraveled. I'm just going to trim this off. And now I have my shoulders finished. I'm just going to double check that I have everything on correctly. Yeah, my shoulders are finished. So let's go take a look at this real quick. Okay, so my shoulders are finished. And now because I pattern hacked this, there's no center back seam. I'll have to say, you know, I almost kind of like when there was a center back seam, I don't know, it just kind of gave some de defining to the waistline, but I'll have to come up with something creative. I just wanted to do something different than my other ones. So, all right, so here's the front. So we have our side seams. Now you could actually turn this into a tank, a tank sweater, leave the sleeves off. That would be very cute, but I'm gonna go for the whole sweater. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut my sleeves and I'm going to insert my sleeves because I actually will then sew my entire seam from the underarm seam all the way down in one swoop. Now, if you're making the pattern from the original, you would sew together your shoulders, then you would sew together your bottom to your top and your bottom to your top on the front and back, okay? There's a whole directions that you could follow. I'm just hacking it. So you've got all of these directions to follow. Let's see, you would be, well, I think in the directions, the tank is first. <laughs> but here, here's a visual. If you did have a seam, you would attach the top to the bottom like that. And then it, depending on what size you are, if you're, um, I think it's like maybe size 4X and 5X, you would need the center, the bottom back piece, which I attached mine, but that bottom piece, uh, it wasn't quite wide enough to cut on the fold because it is wider at the bottom. And so there, there's a center back seam for you there. That's only if you can't get the whole width in by cutting it on the fold. And then you attach your bottom piece to your top back piece, surge that, and then you can see here, I insert my sleeves and then stitch all the way down. Okay, so. Any questions on that so far? Oh, a shearing at the back. You know what, Janice? Shearing in the back might be a great idea. We just did that in cover stitch 103 with my bad elastic. <laughs> I need to go buy some good elastic. But also, you could just stitch. I'm going to play with a few things. Because you could just stitch a piece of fabric, press it under and have just a little piece of fabric, put either a piece of elastic in there that just kind of gathers it a little bit, and maybe just attach that. So it kind of maybe add a little embroidery to that. Something unique. I love the shearing idea though. Oh, that's so funny, Beth. I think maybe my camera, that's the camera we call Blinky. I think he doesn't like the serger. Oh yeah, thanks. I Yep, I sure do sell that. A Blinky, oh yes, he does not, that camera does not like that serger. Well, I like the serger. I think the camera just doesn't like serging. So
So Veronica, I have like, I have, I did the collaboration with um, Softlock for this, with Wonderfill for the Softlock and I have 60 colors. On the website though, sometimes it's really tricky to order. So if you order thread, there's a whole color chart. You can click, you click on that color chart, just write down the colors that you want. And in the notes, you could just say, these are the colors I wanna make sure that I add it to the order. Cause if it doesn't let you add a certain number, it gets very confusing. So a lot of people just order, like 10 spools of one color in the notes, they'll say, give me two of this, two of that, two of that. I'm the one filling the order so I can do that. Or you can send me an email, but you're going to need two. Pam, I'm using Wooly, I'm using Wooly Poly, not Wooly Nylon, but Wooly Nylon would work as well. It's just a little thicker. It's really soft, has a light stretch to it. Wooly Nylon has a lot of stretch to it, or more, I should say. There's also stretch serger thread. It works great with knits. And it's really soft. So hopefully that answers your questions. Oh, Stacy, sorry, we're missing you. Have not happy you're going to the hospital, but if you're dropping somebody off, hopefully it's nothing serious. All right, any more questions for me before I keep rolling? Oh, Mary. You already washed your fabric? Oh my gosh, that didn't take long. Yeah, <laughs> I would say um, like when I give a yard, it's usually like a yard and a quarter, something like that. It's definitely not exact. And that's probably why my inventory is so out of whack. <laughs> oh, Joanne, I still do have coral. I have coral and yellow. I have one more bolt of each that I have not been opened. I think there's maybe... I don't know how many yards are on that. Tony, uh, this this is, um, again, a rayon knit. I don't have, I do actually have a little bit of this color in stock. I don't think it, there's very much, though. I have a dark green in. So right now I have dark green, yellow, and coral. But it's a rayon knit. Very, it's the exact, well, it's not the exact, because the new fabrics come from Turkey. Uh, so it's very similar, though. Rayon is a natural fiber, so it's breathable and it has a light stretch. Arnell, great question. Can you put woolly poly in the air threader? Yes, you can. So you're probably, depending on which um, brand you're using, it should come with a long wire, kind of like, like a long wire thing. <laughs> it, I don't know, what do you call it? Thingamajig. <laughs> it's a long wire thing with a little loop that you push that through the air threader. It's long enough to come right through the air threader and then you put that thread through that little loop that you have and then pull it right out. It works great. I don't think I would recommend tying off and pulling through on the air threader. There's just too many things that could go wrong with that. But if you use that little thingamajig, if anyone knows the proper name for it, feel free to fill in. <laughs> Wire leader. Thank you, Janice. That sounds like so much. I don't know. Thingamajig sounded kind of good too, but <laughs> yeah, that's what you need. Glenda. Hey, Glenda, I hope you got my email today. It came back to me and said it wasn't delivered, so hopefully you got it. But um, if you didn't, email me again because I sent you a long email this morning. Uh, Angela, when you get to the sleeves on the right, are you telling about the experience? <laughs> Glenda, you're way, way, way too funny. Okay, so cat's out of the bag, Glenda. So when you put your sleeves in, make sure you put your right sleeve in and your left sleeve in the proper way. Because, now this is not a two-piece sleeve like a jacket, but it's still, there is a proper right and a proper left. Your front and your back are not exactly the same. So what Glenda's laughing about, this is so funny. Oh, Glenda, you've known me way too many years. So years ago, when Wynn and I first started dating, I mean, we're talking years ago, that would be 1994, and I just got out of college, and he invited me to a dinner. It was um, like a business event or something, which, by the way, my wardrobe was colored jeans and colored sweatshirts. I think that's what's in again right now, actually, how time changes, right? And he said, just wear a business suit or something like that. And I think this was about 10 in the morning and he was going to pick me up at about six. And so I was thinking, uh, what am I going to wear? So I ran into my stash and I found some beautiful gray and pink, beautiful wool, 
lining. Oh yeah, I went to town. I made a fully lined skirt, Chanel-like jacket, double-breasted, fully lined, both pieces, all the way down to the hilt, and finished 15 minutes early, by the way. It was beautiful, my favorite color. It was a soft gray and pink. Um, it was just beautiful, so I thought. So anyways, I go to put this on, and I my sleeves, my sloper was a perfect match for me. I mean, I had worked on this a long time, so my sleeve, would bend to my arm. It's a two-piece sleeve, that's what it does, right? So I put it on and it was really tight in the shoulders and I thought, what the heck is going on? So I step back here and I'm like, why can't I move? And I turned to the side and I could see all these puckers right here. Well, guess what? I know, those of you that know me already know the end of the story. The rest of the story is, <laughs> I put the sleeves on the wrong way, and not only did I put them on the wrong way, I had stitched them in place, and this was when I first started really designing a lot of clothes, but I didn't know a lot about sewing, so I think I probably used a 2.5 stitch on this thing and the lining, and I had a little shoulder pad, and I mean, I went, it was finished. There was no way I could rip this out, re-sew it in the 15 minutes before a wind came to the door. So, what Glenn is laughing about is, I realized that if I put my arms back like this, it would be the fold of the jacket. So guess what? It worked great. So I stood like that all night. <laughs> and I'll never forget the woman, and if you're watching my Facebook this show, I'm gonna laugh even harder, but she said, your jacket is gorgeous. And I said, thank you. And she complimented the fit too. And she said, for someone your age, you have, <laughs> I forgot exactly how she put it, something about my fabulous posture. And I was thinking, if you only knew, <laughs> if you only knew why I'm standing like this. So Glenda, you are hilarious. Now you all know the rest of the story. That is so true. <laughs> all right, back to surging. How does the leader go through the threader? So Mary, it's a metal piece. And check your manual too, if you have an air threader. It just slides right through that, and it's long enough that it comes right out the other end. You don't push the air threader, it actually comes out the other end. Do hickey. That's definitely. Marianne, that's a good one, too. The only thing is for the air threader, you have to have something long enough that you it can go through to the other side. <laughs> Thanks, Shirley. Hey, Sandra. I know, so true, guys, so true. But, you know, I always now make sure that I check my right and my left sleeve, even if it's just a knit top. Here you go, Janice. Janice, I put it up on the screen. Janice has the full description of how to do that. You don't use the air threader button. That's what I was trying to say. All right, any more? <laughs> That's so funny. All right, so your next thing is that you're going to cut, I'm going to go finish cutting my pattern out. I'm gonna cut the sleeves out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tank top out, the collar, and when you cut your tank top, you have an option. You can either add the collar, the binding, which I think that always looks classy on a tank top. Or you can uh, tuck it under, just use a cover stitch machine, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to cut those pieces out. I'm going to sew in my sleeves and sew my jacket together. Then I'm going to go ahead and sew my tank top together. So I'm going to sew at the shoulders and the side seams. And then next week, we'll sew in the binding and the collar. Sound good? I'll wait and make sure you guys don't have any more questions for me. <laughs> Oh, vinyl wallets would be great. Oh, thanks, Jolita. So true, though. So true. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. Um, let's see. What else? Was there anything else on your Richter scale for the week? So the last thing... Uh, while I go sew, is if you're interested, if you'd like to win another class, we've got a class this Friday. Let me just bring it up here. I think I have the link 
you can enter to win a spot in the class. And if you haven't done this before, here's the routine. You just make a comment on the blog post and I'll post it right here so you have it. And I draw a random winner at about 10 a.m. on Friday. And because we're doing it on the blog, you can get extra entries for doing it, for leaving a comment on Facebook as well. But here you go. I'm gonna share my screen. So the class is Fridays with Cindy. We're doing Embroidery 102 and it's small letters. She has this very cute uh, recipe that she has that comes, she did it, digitized it in every format, or at least quite a few formats. It looks like this. You don't have to do pink. She also has one. She did it with blue. It's a little cookie and then her recipe. So she's going to teach. She's going to give tips and then I'm also going to add, because I do things a little bit different than she does on some of these, and how different ways of hooping, different ways of embroidering small letters. So it's not just for something like this, but using a thin towel, linen, things like that. And so here you just go to this blog post. I will post it right in the comments. And I think you have until Friday at 10 to win. So leave a comment there and then I'll be posting a photo on Facebook, which if you leave a comment there tomorrow, you get extra entries. So you just scroll down to the bottom Oh, a lot of you left comments. And leave a comment, and I randomly choose. So good luck to you. And if you have any questions about any of the past classes, you can watch any of them, even if you've missed them. Go pop in. Uh, did you end up ripping out? Oh, Lu <laughs> Louise, did I end up ripping out the jacket? You know, it's so funny. I did not. And so <laughs> I have a couple of these stories, but that's just one you're going to hear today. So I did not. Instead, I donated it to, I gave it away. I don't remember if it was to Goodwill or one of those places, uh, Salvation Army. And so I still, to this day, my husband still laughs about it. And my girlfriends, we all laugh about this. But like, I wonder if somebody was like, oh my gosh, that almost looks like a Chanel style jacket. That is so cool. And they're putting it on and they're thinking, what the heck? <laughs> so somebody, some lucky person has that suit and it even had um, my name embroidered in it and everything. So. If you find that, it was a very, it was a mini skirt and a double breasted, little double breasted jacket, gray and pink. Super cute. Colleen, you want to make the tank top neck higher? Okay, hold on. I'll show you real quick before we hang up. Let me take you here. I think I have the tank top right here. All right, so if you would like the tank top higher, now I cut mine apart from last week because I was messing with it with when we were teaching. So let me just taper back together. Now remember, when you're making your tank top higher, that you're also going to be adding a binding on there, which does raise it a little bit. Okay, so if you want this to be higher, this is the simplest thing you've ever done. If this is your center front line. I'll just use my ruler. Just draw, add a piece of paper to this. Draw this line up as high as you want to go. I mean, I wouldn't go too much higher, but maybe, maybe you're going to go two inches. I'll draw this two inches higher so you can see it. All right. And then follow your neckline around just a little bit. Let's see, I'm cutting. We'll just start here just because it's easier. Curve that around. If you want it to be higher, but you still want it to be a little wider, then go like this. So you just have to make sure that you true this line on the side, but to make it higher, that's the only thing you do. And then go over, don't go down, but at least go over or go up from there. And then here's your shoulders. You don't wanna go, you still need room for your neck, don't forget. So don't just go straight up and over to here. I always try to like even this out with the side. Make sense? All right. Any last minute questions? <laughs> That's really funny though. 
So uh, I just saw somebody say, can you sign up for the class and what happens if you win? Well, then you just get a refund or you can gift it to a friend, whatever one you want. You Lately, um, I've had everyone's email address except for one. So I just, as soon as I drew your name, I can see your email address uh, from leaving a comment on my blog. And I just take your email address and pop it into the class. And if I notice that you're already in there, then I just go in and give you a refund. Oh, thanks, Susan. They're just mini courses. They're 90 minutes. And then after, you don't have to show up live. But after the live class, then it goes into the Angela Wolf Academy. So it's academy.angelawolf.com. You can pop in there. And that's where you can go back, watch the replays, and it'll stay in your classroom for as long as you like. There's the website. All right, let's see. Any last ones? Oh, good, Sandy. So what about the binding? I'm gonna sew the binding to the neckline. So if you're gonna raise your neckline, just leave the binding for now, because I always just cut my binding. I don't even measure what you'll see next week. So Brenda, if you're gonna raise your neckline, the binding that you're cutting is already gonna be fine, because it's actually, you're gonna need less of that fabric, so just cut it the way it is. What is the fabric called? So Pam, this fabric is called, let me double check. I think I call, it's called Soft Teak. Let me share my screen here. Uh, this is angelapatterns.com. And if you go here, scroll down, the, there's not photos on these two new pieces of fabric. So I also have it in black. That's over there. I just haven't taken a photo. It's right here. Coral Soft Teak Rayon. It's sold by the yard. Always look on my website to see if it's sold by the yard or half a yard. Some of the more expensive fabrics, I change to the half yard, so it saves you a little bit of money. So that's it. All right. Oh, is it three already? Got to go see Emily. All right, I'm hanging up. <laughs> yep, you can watch this from the beginning, Jude. As soon as I hang up, you can watch it on my YouTube or my um Facebook page, and I also drop it into AngelaWolf.com if you look down below. All right, everyone. I think I've got everyone's questions. I didn't miss any. If I did, I'm sorry. It's probably because of the crack in the glasses. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Perfect. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow at noon on The Brothers Show. Uh, we're going to be doing something fabulous there. I can't even remember the project, but I'll let you know tomorrow. How's that? <laughs> yes, definitely. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a good day.